Hi, this is Ken Hendrickson, W6BZY. Welcome to my shack. You're looking at a picture of my ham shack desktop. Here's a bigger picture of it, maybe. You'll notice right in the middle is the M1 Mac, my new edition. The M1 Mac came out in November, and there were lots of very good reviews of it. Include, it came out with uh, two laptops and the Mac Mini. As you can see, I'm running two screens, and uh, the Mac Mini was just what I needed. It'll run two screens. So I got the Mac Mini, and I hooked it up, and lo and behold, it was marvelous. I got my two screens up right away. Then I uploaded updates and lost the second screen. As someone once said, if you buy the first of anything, <laughs> be prepared for bumps in the road. So I told myself, let's be patient. It's okay. And the next update restored the missing screen. And I was ready to go. So I installed WSJTX, got ready to launch it. And I'm going to do that right now. So let me get this out of the way. You'll notice down here at the bottom, I have WSJTX installed. And I'm going to click on it. Right away, I get an error, shared memory error. OK, so I click OK. Fatal error. Uh-oh. Fatal error means just what it means, what it says. <laughs> it ain't going to run. OK. So I said, OK, I'll just wait a little while. So being the patient person I am, I gave it a couple of days. No results. So I went out on the internet looking for a solution. And if you haven't uh, joined it yet, WSJTX has a Groups.io web page, uh, group. And so I went there. This is the main group. And I'm a member of this group, but I've just logged in uh, so you could see what it looks like if you're not a member. It doesn't matter if you're a member or not. If you go to Messages, at the moment, my message is the second one down. So probably other people have been looking for it. If you have to search for it, there is a search button right here. And you could type in M1 Mac error, which you can see I've done before. And if you search for it, you wind up. Here's the uh, postings. You'll see it's been responded to a few times. Uh, so let's go here. This is my posting. And essentially, I just clipped the two error messages, put it in the, in the message, and posted it. The amazing thing was that within a matter of maybe minutes, for certainly within the first hour, I got a response that told me exactly what the problem, not what the problem was, how to fix the problem. And you have to in, run these two lines of code in a terminal. Now, don't worry if you're not a Linux, I mean a <laughs> Macintosh techie. The terminal is there to be used, and all you have to do is a little cutting and pasting. You don't really have to be a techie to do this repair or this fix. So if you go to Applications and Launchpad, you look around, you won't see it right away. It's in one of these other subfolders somewhere. And if you search around, you'll find Terminal. Now, if you ever need to find an, whether an application is going to show up in Launchpad, you can go up here to the Search button and just type it in. So if I type in Terminal, it pops up, and I can then click on it. So now I have the Terminal running. Let's get uh, this back up. and Let me make it a little smaller. There we go. OK, so we want to reduce it down and slide it over a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and paste from the message over to the terminal. So the first command is right there. And I highlight it with my mouse. Then I right click and I copy it. There's usually two or three ways to do this. You can see I'm a 
an old Windows user because right-clicking does a lot of stuff. So I, I go here, I left-click to get to the right spot, and I paste with a right-click. Okay, there's the command. Now, if I press Enter, it asks me for a password. The reason it's asking me for a password is uh, similar to Windows, uh, the Macintosh has different levels of users. And you need to be an admin. If you were in Windows, it would be admin. Uh, but this is sudo, which stands for super user do. So I type in my password, which is the one I used to log in with, press the return key, and the first command has been performed. Then I go over here and I highlight, I copy, I paste it over here, press enter, and a second command has been performed. And nothing much seems to have happened, but they show you that if you do this third command right here, copy and paste, it will show you that the memory allocation has been changed. And now everything is going to be lovely. Now, thanks to Jim Bennett for searching out this solution. By the way, his call is W6JHB. Uh, by the way, 6 is California, so I'm W6BZY, so he's probably a fellow Californian unless he's moved. And let me scroll down here a ways because uh, I got several responses and I told, uh, I told Jim what a marvelous guy he was for coming up with a solution so fast. And then Bill Somerville, uh, G4WJS, gave me this reply, and I think it's rather worth noting. We do not know why the original, uh, and they names the file, for mechanism for setting the kernel parameters on the Mac OS startup doesn't work on the M1 Mac. It still works on Big Sur with Intel Macs. We're hoping it is a defect or that a different way of doing it will be documented by Apple. For now, you have to set the parameters manually and repeat it every time you reboot. That last part is kind of important. Every time you restart your computer, you're going to have to type those two commands into the terminal. To me, I just mostly leave my Mac, M1 Mac running. Uh, it, the wonderful thing about, one of the wonderful things about the M1 Mac is it doesn't draw very much power. Uh, so it's not like my big tower drawing all this juice when it's just sitting here idle. So I leave my Mac running as much as I can. Whenever I have to restart, then I type these lines in. My suggestion would be to copy these two lines into a text file, put it somewhere that's easy to find. You could stick it on your desktop, I suppose. And when you need to, just open it up. When you restart your Mac, open it up. And do this before you start doing anything else. Okay, so now we are done with that. And we are done with our terminal. And we go down here to WSJTX. We click it. And it's up and running. I'm going to leave it sit here for a minute so you can see it really is working. Uh, and you can see I've put it on 20 meters because during the daytime I'm recording this at about 10.40 during the daytime, 10.40 a.m. And you can see I'm getting lots of signals. Uh, everything's coming in nice and clear. My next video is going to be about uh, setting up WSJTX like it is here. Uh, if you haven't set it up before on the Macintosh, you might want to tune in. Uh, and I will go through step by step how to set it up. Referring back to that picture of my desktop, you'll notice that I have a radio over here on the right. It's an ICOM 7300. Uh, the steps that I'm going to go through are good for any type of radio. If you've had it hooked up to other Macs or other op <coughs> operating systems such as Windows or Linux, 
uh, everything will work pretty much the same but I'll show you a few little tricks as if you're having trouble with your uh, radio control cables or your audio cables uh, I'll show you how to find out where they are and what they're called and how to hook them up I hope this video has been helpful this is Ken <coughs> W6BZY signing off for now hope to see you in future videos Please click that like and subscribe button if you want to see more. 73s.